The first thing you do in Filmulator is you select a source directory to import photos from. In this case, I have photos in a directory on my desktop, and you can uh, set it to back up your photos at the same time as you import them to your main editing directory. You can have it append a unique hash to the end of the file name to prevent collisions when you use multiple cameras from the same brand, and you can enqueue photos as they are imported, which we will do right now. So here we see this is the organized tab, and you can see I have a histogram along the top showing how many photos were taken on each day. So on October 17th, I took 148 photos. It seems that the importing has finished, so now we can go to the Filmulate tab and double click on an image in order to uh, select it for editing. And you can see, once it loads, we can zoom in and pan around freely. This photo has some shake. I don't like it, so I will remove it from the queue. It doesn't look like it turned out the way I wanted anyway. Let's see, so here we have one photo. We can see that this one, this is a histogram from before the filmulation step. It's linear in nature, so we could have exposed one more stop, but I noticed that when I was taking them, so let's try this second photo, which might be better exposed to the right. And you can see here, it indeed is very much exposed to the right. In fact, there's a little bit of clipping, so I can recover that using highlight recovery. So let's let it run, and we can see that it's with highlight recovery, we can recover basically all of the data. So now I'm just going to to increase the exposure effectively of the film. And then now I will adjust the film parameters in order to shape the post-film simulation histogram. So general, the general thing to do is to raise the drama to 60 or so, which attenuates the highlights without really touching the shadows too much. And then by lowering the white clipping points, you leave the highlights where they were and you raise the shadows. And it also, when combined with lowering the shadow brightness back down a little, it adds a good amount of like saturation and not directly saturation, but a color intensity that's different from simply changing the saturation slider. And it looks like it's sharp, it's clean, and well, it looks like I'm happy with it, so I'll just save a JPEG.